party people what is up welcome back to my channel so today is a uh, we're gonna call this a social experiment today um, I am uploading a page in my art journal um, and this is yeah we're gonna call it an experiment because I have no idea how this is going to go um, I normally do not share my art journal pages but I am doing this because a couple people on Instagram said that you guys wanted to see this um, so yeah, so I'm going to kind of talk you through my process. Um, I, I don't know how to explain what I do here because a lot of what I do in my art journal is not for the sake. So like when you scrapbook, it's kind of for the sake of the finished page. And what I do in my art journal is for the sake of the process. So it's, um, it's kind of hard to explain to you what I'm doing and why. Because uh, I'm just playing. I'm, I'm playing. I'm pulling out products. I'm pulling out stuff that brings me joy and I'm playing. So I'm working in my Arteza art, join, art journal. This is about um, a little bit smaller than 9 by 12, I want to say. And I took out some Distress Oxides in my favorite colors, pink, purple, and teal. So it's um, worn lipstick, shaded lilac, and peacock feathers. And I just sprayed it right on the background. And at first I was like, I'll just make one page. But I had so much color that I just used the page next to it as a mop. And I'm using this stencil from Joggles. And I'm just taking a baby wipe and working it through the stencil just to kind of lift up some of the color a little bit. Um, and I do this for, I think, a few seconds. And then I just go ahead and spray it with water. And again, I can't explain to you why I'm making the choices I make. I'm not doing things for color theory or for contrast. I'm just doing things because it's fun and it feels good. Um, the Arteza art journals have a mix of textured sides and smooth side. So I think I skipped the page before this because I wanted to work on the textured paper instead of working on the smooth paper. Paper, And I'm just mopping up with a piece of paper, like with a roll of paper towel in between layers um, just to keep building color. And so I go ahead and I grab my silicone mat because I was getting a little bit of overspray and I want to cover, like completely cover this piece, this page with color. Um, so I go in and I spray some more color down, again in the same color palette, um, trying not to overpower the pinks and the pr the pink with the blue and the purple, and just mixing things up for my page. Um, I literally just wanted to play with the this color. These colors are my favorite color, and so I use these colors a lot. I use these colors and I use black a lot in my art journal. I've been trying to challenge myself to use. Um, like reds and oranges more, but those are just not the colors I gravitate towards. These are my favorite colors to work with. You see these colors a lot in my scrapbooking also. Um, and so I'm just repeating the same steps, which is putting that stencil down, running some water through it with my distress sprayer, picking up some kitchen roll, um, and rubbing it through. And then you'll see it adds a lot of texture to my background. Now, it's just funny watching this video and doing the voiceover because I, I have the completed page right next to me. And all this work I do in the background just does not matter in the long run. Um, and that is the way I work on my art journal. It's, again, less about the, the end result and more about the process for me. Um, so I, I do a lot of work on this background and then completely cover it up in the long run. So now I'm taking a bit of text stamp. Um, this was on a wooden block, but I just took it off the block because I wanted it off the block so I could do some sort of a rolling motion. And then I grabbed this Finnebear um, stamp set. And these are, again, are, these are cling. These are cling stamps, not photopolymer stamps. And I stamp a few butterflies on my background. I'm just working on adding texture. And then I grab this hexagon stencil from Dilutions and um, the rose quartz. Yeah, this is rose quartz paint also from Dilutions. And I just take an ink blending tool and start blending it through that stencil. And I put it down in a few places before I realize that it's kind of too white, too light. Like, it's too tone on tone for what I want to do. So I mix in a little bit of gesso with the pink paint that I had on my desk. Um, you get a lighter pink, hopefully, so you can see it a little bit better. Um, and I get that, but it's still a little too close to pink. So then I eventually end up just going in with pure gesso. I changed my blending foam because my blending foam was covered in pink paint. So it's diluting the gesso and changing colors. Um, so I changed the blending foam with from the, the, the pink one that I was using 
do a new one that will hopefully give me more white and then do the same thing going through the stencil again with the new blending foam and I just take some gesso on my fingers um, and blend it all out my husband was at work when I came when he when I was working on this page and I came home and he's looking at me and looking at my hands he was like were you painting because I was literally covered in paint by the time this was done I had paint on all of my fingernails I had paint on my legs on my elbow um, when I start working in my art journal, I just really get in it. Um, I'm not, I'm not tidy about this at all. Um, this is this again. This is just creative play for me in the same way that scrapbooking is. But again, when I scrapbook, I have a different goal in mind. When I scrapbook, I have a page in mind. Like I have an end result. I have a story I want to tell. And when I'm working in this. I'm just doing whatever feels good. So I added a bit more white to that background and then I added one of these collage uh, papers from Dina Wakely to my background. Now, when I initially put her down, I had the idea that maybe she was going to be the foreground of my piece. Uh, so I just, I cut her out. It was a full sheet of paper. I cut out a lot of her hair and a lot of the other stuff around her. And I just used some matte gel to collage her into the background. And I'm heat setting between steps because I am impatient and I don't want to wait for things to dry. So I just take my heat tool between steps and completely check things to make sure that they are dry um, before working on the next part of this. So I pull out... Um, my paints actually. So I had a tag out because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the tag or if I wanted her to be the foreground. And I go back and forth a lot. Again, I have no end goal. I feel like I'm going to say this a hundred times, but I really have no end goal in mind when I'm doing this stuff. I'm literally just doing whatever feels good at the moment. And sometimes what feels good doesn't make sense, but like I do it anyway. So I decide that I want to like paint on her hair using the same colors that I've already have in my background. So I take a little bit of that dilutions paint and I just start painting on a shape that looks close to hair. Now, I'm not an artist. Um, this is not something I do for a living. This is 100% a hobby. I am not, I, like, I feel like, ugh, I hate feeling like I have to explain myself, um, but I'm sure that, like, people who are, like, artists for, a li like, who are talented artists for a living are going to watch some of the choices I make, and they're like, I probably wouldn't have done that. Like, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have carried the color on to the second page. Like, I should have left it all on this page, um, but... Again, I just get carried away when I work in this art journal and things just get bigger than they should be. Because now that I'm watching it again, I really liked this shape and I wish I had stayed with it. Um, but I had music on and I was really feeling the process and so I just kept adding more and more paint. So I used um, some purple to add not highlights, just to add more color since I had the pink and purple in the background. And I just, I think I spent like 20 minutes just following this shape that could be hair and I go back and forth with the same brush between the pinks and the purples just building this shape that again could be hair in the end I don't know what it is I'm not even sure if it is hair I don't know what I was going for in the end I just keep adding more and more color until it just becomes this behemoth but it was it was more of the rhythmic like motions of just adding the brush strokes that really just became a thing for me um I, so I just kept going back and forth with the paints. Um, I was listening to a podcast on, oddly enough, the podcast that I was listening to was about abandoning perfection. Um, so it's kind of fitting that that's what I was listening to as I was working on this. But now you see, this is where the hair kind of gets out of control. Like it's just, it is growing and becoming its own beast. And I'm just like, I'm just going to cover this entire page with this pink and purple monstrosity um, and cover up all that really lovely background work I did. So all that background work I did to build, to add color and texture and dimension is completely gone in this pink and purple mass, um, which is why I said what I said in the beginning. Uh, the, the process of everything else, it's way more important to me than what you get in the long run. Um, do I still like the page? I, of course, like the page. Um, I wouldn't be sharing it with you if it wasn't something that I liked. But I do, I change my mind a lot. So here I just decided... I don't really want to see her face anymore. So I take a bit of apricot paint. This is the Dina Wakely Heavy Body Paint. And I'm using a baby wipe to kind of thin it out. So I add a little bit to the her face directly. And then 
I take a baby wipe to thin it out. So I can still see her facial features, um, but she's not that like stark white that she was before. And I thought about taking a pencil and going back in and redrawing some of her features, but I kind of wanted her to be pushed back to the back of the background. Like that was, that's eventually where I ended up was that I wanted her pushed to the back of the background. And then I take one of my Inktense pencils. Um, this is... It's either bark or jet black. I can't remember which one I use. And I just use it to like draw shapes that like draw lines that could mimic the flow of hair. It's very random. There's no rhyme or reason or like technique involved. And then I spray it with water. Because if you're familiar with the ink tense pencils, the ink tense pencils are an ink in a pencil and they are water reactive. Um so I spray it with water just to kind of like move that color around a little bit. And I'm not sure what it does. <laughs> like watching it, I'm not sure what it does for the actual piece. But again, I just wanted to put a bunch of stuff on this page and to work with product and play with things. Um, so that's all I did. I sprayed it and then I just used my paintbrush to kind of move it around. The Inktense pencils, um, I've done a lot of coloring with these. These are one of my favorite coloring mediums. Um... They are reactive when they're wet, but once they dry, they set. So you can't, like, reactivate them. Um, so whatever you're doing with them, you kind of have to do it quickly um, and wet it in tiny batches. And that's, like, the best way to get, I guess, to get any sort of, like, real movement with them. So here is the first time I do something that I actually don't like. Um, and actually, after this page is over, I do go back and fix some of this. Like, I, I blended some of this stamping in the background. The, the black was so stark on top of all the pastels. And I kind of wish that I hadn't done this. Um, but I picked up the butterfly stencil and added a bit more. Just because I, I wanted some more black in the into the, color, the background. Because it's now just becoming this huge pastel thing. Um, so, I, after I finished recording it, I went back and I kind of knocked some of those those butterflies back with a little bit of white gesso and I liked it a lot more um in the long run so what I did here is I pulled out my tag um and I took one of those butterflies they're from the Dina Wakely chipboard sets that just came out of at Creativation and I spray the I put the butterfly on the tag and then I spray the tag with all the colors that I'm using now here's a little bit of color theory Pink and blue make purple. And so when you throw pink, blue, and purple on a tag, you know what you get? A lot of purple, which is what I ended up with. I ended up with almost a purely purple tag. Um, just because I was spraying things willy-nilly and not really thinking about the choices that I make. Um, so I put down one layer. I kind of heat set it quickly so that it was dry to the touch. And then since it was overwhelmingly purple, I moved the butterfly a little bit and tried to add a little bit more color. I probably should have stuck like stopped right here but I think no I did stop here and then I like quickly wiped it off with my paper towel to add a little bit more pink back into the a little bit more pink back into the tag and now my butterfly is tinted and that's the reason I decided to add some more butterflies back to the page was because I knew I wanted to use that big butterfly piece and to help my tag stand out a little bit Oh, I don't do this yet. First thing I do is I add my sentiment, I guess, is what it's called. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. But I pulled out these stencils um, from Dina Wakely, and I use the Night Paint. Um, it's the heavy body paint in Night. And my, again, nothing I do about this is very neat. It is all kind of very loose and messy. And I added the word fly using my ink tool and the... Um, the night paint through the stencil and you see I, I, I kind of ended up a little bit on the E so I get that little that dark edge after the FLY um, and it spells fly and this is where I do it to help my tag stand out a little bit more I just take some archival ink and I use it to edge my tag and I kind of go a little bit nuts um, edging my tag and this is just to help it kind of stand out a little bit so it doesn't blend into the background that I built because everything is very tone on tone it's not really like, it can't be monochromatic because there's pinks, purples, and blues, but everything is tone on tone, which is the look I was going for. I wanted it to be kind of hazy and kind of dreamlike, and I didn't want it to have any, like, super sharp contrasting colors. Um, so I stuck to the same color palette for the whole page. Um, so I decided to quickly ink up my butterfly as well just to kind of help it stand out um, because, again, everything is very when everything's the same color to help things kind of stand out a little bit adding that shadowy edge helps a lot 
Um, and since my background was needed, for me, it needed a little bit more contrast, I took this Vicky Booten stencil, um, which is supposed to mimic handwriting. It's not saying anything, but it mimics handwriting. And I added the same, using the same night paint, added a little bit more to my background. And I liked that choice so much because I think it just needed something dark, um, to kind of ground all of those pastel colors. So after this, I think I just go ahead and stick my tag on. So using the same matte gel medium that I use to collage my, the girl into the background, I collage my tag down and then I use glossy accents to stick down my butterfly just as I wasn't sure if the, um, if the, the gel medium was going to be, uh, thick enough, I guess, or, uh, what's the word? Sticky enough, I guess, to hold down my butterfly. Now, with glossy accents, because it is glossy, you just have to be mindful of where you use it. And then I just take a food ball pen, which is designed to write on pretty much anything. So I take a food ball pen and I use that to just add some journaling right onto my tag. Just add a few a few words about what I was thinking and what I was feeling as I was making that page. And this is done. So, um, you guys, this is definitely an experiment. So please let me know in the comments what you think. If you'd like to see more art journal style videos from you, from me, you will not hurt my feelings if you say don't ever show us anything like this again. Um, but I figured so many people are asking to see what I'm making, so I decided to share a little bit with you. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe if you're so inclined, and let me know what you think in the comments. Till next time, keep it crafty and have the best day. Bye!